which we always know he has, defence, movement, very unusual to see a whole arena clapping for someone to make people miss. And, uh, just a show real knockout and, and a real statement. So over to you guys for questions for Connor and, and Tony as well. Connor, it was a, a real sickening knockout, as I just mentioned to Eddie then. Did you feel that the finish was going to come as quick as it did? And what was your reaction when it did happen? I uh, definitely knew the knockout was coming. I mean, I'm flying into the middleweights for sparring. They're not just sparring six rounds or three, four rounds. They're sparring 12 rounds with two different middleweights. Super middleweights, 12 minute, 12 rounds, 4 minutes, 30 seconds rest. So, you know, if he wanted to take me into deep waters, you know, his trainer was saying I was going to sink. Um, but, you know, talk is cheap. Talk is very cheap. Um, and, you know, just because I don't go around raving about how good I am or, you know, I'm top class and I just let my fist do the talking. Continue to prove that uh, as, uh, you know, I will be number one. And that number one spot, you know, I'm coming for it. Were you surprised that the ref actually did a count when oh, the knockout? It's, it was nuts, wasn't it, really? Mm -hmm. like, see that a lot, though, yeah. yeah. I was very, very surprised, because when he, you see him just go, go down... Was... He did he did sit up, go to sit up, yeah. but you could see by the way he went down. I mean, he was polaxed. You don't need to count when a fighter's polaxed, but... It was a scary second, Connor, where you were cocked and it looked like you... He was still on his feet. You could have done him again. You wouldn't have been in trouble for it, but you'd, it showed, showed a bit of maturity and experience that you didn't have. Oh, I was very close. <laughs> I was very, very close. You talk about maturity. Um, yeah, done to me, done me the spite still ain't there. You know, I've hit a guy before. Um, Stephen Jamar hit him. He's like, I rolled him back. He's dead. And I still want to take him out. So it ain't, um, it's just the way I am. I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, you know, I'd like to think I'd be the, the guy that, you know, gets down on his hands and knees straight away, but I'm in such a, an animated, aggressive state that, you know, I'm just, yeah, just still revved up. Um, but, you know, I'm glad he's okay. Um, and, you know, we, yeah, we just had a chat afterwards, so, um, I'm just, yeah, just thankful to share the room with him. Connor, um, a lot of people, as every fight, they say maybe this one is a bigger step up for you, and that's what the word was with Chris Algieri. Uh, did you feel the difference in experience from your previous opponents, even though you got that, you know, amazing knockout? No. Um, if anything, I think Formella was a little bit more trickier um, than Algieri in terms of styles. And you know, if someone if someone comes to win, it allows me to capitalise on their mistakes. You know, I've not only just beat Algeria, I've also learned in there as well. This is my education. I'm evolving, I'm growing still. And you know, that's the that's what the great thing is about my career, is people have really seen um, me go from, it's very rare you get someone under the spotlight, like I was, and progress to world level. It's very rare because a normal person- And, and so raw at the start. And terribly yeah. raw, yeah. you know. Well, I didn't want to say that. Didn't say, I'll say it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Terribly raw. But, you know, we keep it moving, man. And, you know, hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard. I don't care who you are. If you work hard, you can do whatever you want. Just apply yourself 100%. I think it's amazing if you go back to that skinny kid walking down the steps at O2. Skinny, you know, the skinny podgy yeah. kid. Yeah. Just to think that he would go on, you know. And I know there's still levels to come, but Formella, Vasquez, Granados, Algeria, just over that sort of year period, and perform the way he has, and, and headline tonight in Liverpool. I mean, he's from, you know, he's from Ilford, far Australia, far Spain. So, you know, but that, that's, that's just a, a sign that the kid, he's a star. And everywhere he goes, Leeds last time at the reception is incredible because he's so exciting to watch. I was going to ask as well after the fight, uh, I know you're still enjoying this, this fight, but the name Bruno is brought to you. I want to see what you think of, of that as a potential next opponent. Is that something you, you want to entertain for 2022? I'll take, I'll take Bruno out. Uh, he doesn't concern me at all. I've, these fights I've asked for. I don't need to call him out on social media because I know what social media is because I get called out myself by, other, by these bums. I get called out all the time. It's like, you just got to pay no attention. So I get Bruno or Brooke or Khan not entertaining the thought, but you know, I've said to Eddie, listen, if you can make it, make it. At the end of the day, money talks. So, you know, that, that's it. That's what it comes down to. You so, mentioned Broner as well. Um, obviously, Khan and Brooke, the conversation, I know Eddie, you feel that that's just not realistic really is it? I don't know. Listen, I like, I, like, I like him here, but he, 
his eyes nearly popped out of his head when I started talking about Conor Ben. He just, he doesn't want to face that young smoke. Do you know what I mean? And that's why he took the Kel Brook fight over the Conor Ben fight because it's a friendly affair. The two guys, it's just, it's a little go in and have a dance for several million and good luck to them, they deserve it. But it's different when you're talking about Conor and Virgil Ortiz and Boo Dennis. These are horrible, spiteful young fighters that come in to take your head off. And they won't be doing that in that fight, trust me. And that's what I said to, to Amir, you know, Amir again, that, can you imagine what, Ke what Conor Ben would do to Amir Khan? Oh my God. When you saw that tonight, it would be, honestly, it would be over within two rounds. Two rounds. As soon as he hit him on the chin, you know, I tell him you don't scream and shout, but you know, as soon as he hit Amir Khan, it would just be, it would be brutal. And, um, but we'd still love the winner, you know. But I don't think the winner, you know, but I don't think the winner will fight on. Is it not something you'd actually actively pursue? Yeah, I'd love to, but I just don't. Try it. All those conversations, this is the last one for those guys. Mm. Um, Kel may buy a box, I'm not, I don't know, but this is, this is it for those guys. This is the future. You know, but we're not waiting around. Those guys are going to fight in February, then they're not going to fight again until September, October, November. We're out in spring. So who's next? That's the question, and that's a conversation. Mm. So I like, listen, I mean, you know, we, we always talked about that level of Algeria, Guerrero, or, you know, and you've sort of just demolished that level. So now it's up to Tony and Charlie and just to say, like, this is, you know, there's still two levels to World Championship. So that's really... Well, so how many fights are you talking about? Two, I think. Two. two fights and then fight for the World. Because you're going to be, you're keep you're gonna be 22 and us. Well, if they keep ending within six months. I'm start getting violent on that. <laughs> <laughs> Connor, I don't know if you can hear it, Connor, but some of your biggest cheers tonight was real defensive work. Yeah. It was obviously the toughest thing to really learn in the sport. Did, did, did you hear that, or what does it mean to you? Yeah, but I mean, when I do this day in, day out, the more opponents they bring in front of me, the more I can display everything I've been working on. It's not like I'm talking rubbish when I go, my next fight, you'll see a completely different Conor Ben. Because you've seen a completely different Conor Ben the past four or five fights. And you'll, the next fight you'll continue to see something else because well, good coaching. And I say coach because coach is just more than a trainer. It's just it's just all round, you know, inside the ring, outside the ring. Enjoy the video. Feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon.com backslash the Boxing Voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, from Title Betting Shows. The list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.